Look, I've been excited for archaeology in Minecraft since they announced it at Minecraft Live a few years ago, and I'm stoked it's here. But I think we can all agree it's it's just not quite right yet. I think they've pushed a little too hard to emulate real archaeology, which is a cool idea on the surface, but in application, it just has some truly fatal flaws. Like one of the biggest is with real archaeology, a simple pottery shard or an arrowhead is a valuable find because it truly comes from a lost time and place. But in Minecraft, when all we have is a nebulous, fictitious history, true historic value is a really hard thing to sell. But what I think is the biggest flaw is that Minecraft is first and foremost a game, which means everything comes down to fun gameplay that rewards you appropriately based on the time committed and how much of a challenge it presented. Minecraft's archaeology as it currently is just lacks that. So, I'm going to create an upgrade for archaeology that improves on all of this. I'm going to take a more Indiana Jones approach to archaeology where you explore large, mysterious, lost structures full of valuable treasure, traps, obstacles, and even some special relics to find. And as a cherry on top, it's all going to be a data pack with a resource pack, so you'll be able to add it to your Java Edition game with absolutely no mods installed. So let's start with the relics. I did some brainstorming and I came up with three ideas that are pretty valuable but also pretty balanced. The first one is a ceremonial dagger. This weapon has mediocre damage but a very fast recharge speed, so it effectively brings back pre-1.9 combat. And since it's supposed to be a valuable relic, not just a weapon, I also made it give you a small speed buff when you hold it in your main hand. The second one is a new goat horn. This horn allows you to cycle the weather every time you blow it. Personally, I find weather to be one of the most annoying features in Minecraft. I mean, it's, it's always raining when you don't want it to, and yet if you want lightning, you could be waiting ages. This horn makes it nice and simple, and I even added a new horn sound for it. <coughs> And finally, the last one is a new totem, the Totem of Recall. When you hold it in your offhand, you can right-click with it to set a recall point at your location. Then, the next time you right-click with it in your offhand, it will teleport you to your recall point and consume the totem in the process. Super useful if you've traveled a long way from home, or if you're in a sticky situation and you need a quick exit. The trick here is that it's actually a retextured carrot on a stick, and the data pack detects when I right click with it and saves the location with an invisible marker entity. And then when you click it again, it just teleports you to it. Okay, so now we have the major rewards established. It's time to move on to where you will actually find them. My plan is to add a new structure called the Lost Temple. This structure will be the lore basis of how the evokers of the Woodland Mansion find their riches and get their ancient magic. In fact, I actually planned on making it so you could get maps to these temples in the Woodland Mansions and the Buried Treasures, but I, I didn't have time for that. So if people like this, I will definitely add that in a future update and maybe even some more really cool stuff, so be sure to subscribe. But yes, the Lost Temple. This structure will be a subterranean, sprawling, procedurally generated structure that should have enough variety to feel different just about every time you find it. You'll never find more than one of the relics in it, and the path to the room where you'll find it will always be completely filled with traps. So I'm kind of starting from the end and working back from there. The relic room is where I started. The relic spawns on an altar, and I really wanted to make this a special, unique encounter, so I designed a special trap. When you pick up the relic, the door seals itself and the room begins to fill with sand. You have four minutes to complete a challenging parkour course around the room to get to the top, otherwise you'll drown in the sand. I took advantage of the new display entities that Minecraft added in 1.20 to do this. The sand is actually just an oversized sand block entity that is slowly growing in height, and then there's another invisible marker entity that is rising at the same speed as the sand and detects whether the player is below it and if they are, it applies the effects of being under the sand. Like most things in Minecraft, this is cheesable, but I did take a couple steps to make it just a bit harder. You're given mining fatigue, so you can't just break out, but you can still skip the parkour by just building. And honestly, that's probably a good thing. The parkour is really hard. And it's better that it's more of just a pride thing than an actual requirement to, you know, make it out alive. That said, I did add a custom Guardian Spirit, which is a modified Vex that has lower damage but higher health. The idea being that it will make it just a little bit harder to build up an escape. Alright, so now we have some good rewards and we have some exciting gameplay. We just need to package it all up into a full structure. 
Without getting too technical, the way structure generation works is actually not too hard to understand. Basically, you just create a bunch of chunks of a structure, and then you give the game rules about which pieces can connect to each other, and you plug that all into a data pack. The game then essentially grows the structure by starting from a single chunk and attaching more chunks to it, following the rules that you laid out for it. That is grossly simplified, but I did a, I did a deep dive video that explains how this works in great detail if you want to know more. Click the info card on the upper corner if you want to see that. So I built a total of 27 chunks for the game to build this structure with. Three are entrances that are essentially the core of the structure that the rest grows from, and I just made three to offer variety. Seven are different types of hallways that branch into various directions so we don't have the super uniform shape for the structure. And eight are different types of rooms. Some of them are themed decorative rooms like a chapel or a kitchen, and some are, well, <laughs> let's just say they're a little more devious than that. And then we have six chunks that offer some challenge in the form of traps and obstacles like parkour for instance. You'll always have at least two of these leading up to the relic room. Now, I wanted this to build on archaeology that Mojang has implemented though, not just replace it all together, so I made sure to fill it with lots of sand, gravel, and dirt so you can actually quote unquote excavate it. Not so much that it's just like fully buried like the trail ruins, but enough that, you know, you can you can clean it up essentially. And I also made a custom loot table for the suspicious sand and gravel that makes it so you can find some valuables like bundles, golden apples, and even occasionally totems of undying to tie in with the lore idea behind this structure. And now I've wrapped this all up into a nice little package for this video, but actually by this point I had put around 50 hours into this project in just over a week, and I was worried that Mojang would release some sort of big update that makes archaeology better and would undermine the whole idea behind this. So I decided to call it there. There is some more things I would love to do for this, like fix some bugs here or there, add some more modules, make the map show up in the woodland mansions, and maybe even add some more structures just to really flesh out the whole of archaeology. But I am really happy with what I've got, and I'm excited to show it off in more detail, so let's see how it all came together. Oh boy, here we go. Looks like it has generated correctly. Oh, can you imagine if this was actually in the game? Like, this this is sick. This little statue here is half buried, but it kind of marks where you need to dig. Just go a couple blocks in front, dig straight down, and we should... Oh, yep. Yep, we are definitely inside. Oh, this is looking great. Oh, I can already see the relic room. But we're actually... We're going to hold up, because I want to I wanna see what else the structure has to offer. Oh, there we go. Golden apple. That's definitely custom. Amazing. Oh, we got an intersection. Okay, so we got paths generating on all these different sides. Ah, arrow trap. Okay, is this working right? Oh, yeah, it's working right. Easy does it. Don't hit the pressure plates. All right, and straight into a parkour section. Oh, boy. I've never messed this up in testing, so if I mess it up now, I'm going to be quite embarrassed. Let's see. Yeah, nailed it. Oh my god, straight into another trap. Are you kidding? And it doesn't go anywhere. Love it. Love it a lot. Imagine if this water hadn't ruined this, I would have had to do the whole row. Okay, but I think two is going to be plenty hard. Yep. Plenty hard for my very bad self. Ow. Uh, uh, uh. Not even sure what trip that. Just dead end. It also dead ends. This is a bad ah. Oh, got it. Ah. Sorry about it. Nothing happened. I didn't die in my own structure. Okay. A nice, pleasant, decorative module. This is what I like to see. Give me something good for my trouble. Huh? Oh yeah, that's that's great. That's what I was wanting. Oh, a totem. Now we're talking. You know what? I built this place. I've had enough of it. I'm going to go for the relic. Where? Okay. Yes, beautiful diamond block. Ah, yes, beautiful gold block. I will back out now. Glad I stayed. Oh no, my nemesis. My nemesis is the next module! Oh no! I got a cool trick, watch this. Okay. 
Okay. Not dying again. I will not. Oh my god. It's the dagger. Do I dare? Do I dare grab it? Because I know I'm not going to make this parkour. <laughs> I haven't made it once in testing. I know it's possible, but I'm bad. I, you know what? I'm man enough to admit I'll cheat if I need to. Oh boy. Okay, let's start with the vex. Oh, the sand's already rising so quick. Okay, we gotta go. The sand is rising very fast. Oh my god. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. One shot, one opportunity. Okay. Okay, I messed it up. I messed it up real bad. Oh. Okay, you know, we're building, we're building, I'm gonna do it, I'm not dying. You know what, let's, let's give it one more shot from here. Uh, okay, I'm man enough to know that I've lost this fight. Help. Help, it's all gone bad. Okay, can I make it from here? Probably not. Oh my god. Help, help, we're done, we're done. I've shot it off. Screw you, Sand. My child, I leave you in peace to suffer. Oh, oh my god. I made a jump. Congratulate me. I made a structure and I made a jump. I'm done. Hope you like it. I'll see you next time. Bye. If you want to try this out for yourself, there's a link to a free download in the description. Also, if you like 1.20 features, I have a series where me and some friends are trying to collect every smithing template in hardcore, but the structures they all spawn in have been enhanced and challengeified. It is genuinely insane. Go check it out, it's on the screen right now. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!